extra time. It is very rare that you see an audience and you can actually recognize each person in that audience and think somehow, somewhere, I've met individually each of them and I have a connection. This book might be by Nalin and me, but it is actually not a book launch today. It is actually a celebration of Olympic sport in the truest sense. Now, when I say it's a celebration of Olympic sport in the truest sense, what do I mean? Let me just set it up for you. Let me set it up first with my panel and then how do I envisage the flow over the next 45 to 50 minutes. Firstly, thank you HarperCollins for publishing this book. Shabnam and Akriti, thank you so much for believing in us. And HarperCollins and I, we are actually doing another book next year. Sachin, very close to your heart, 1971, 50 years of that, that year. England and West Indies, India winning in England and West Indies. It's the 50th anniversary. So we are doing that book for 1971, which will be published in 2021. Something that we'll talk about at some point. Okay. Now, okay, my panel today. I'll, I'll start with Sachin because it's something as his biographer, as, as a friend. And, and this, is, this is a story. I mean, all of the, as I said, all my panelists have stories that are very closely connected to me. Raghav mentioned Sachin in Rio. And yes, he had a, he had a problem, he had, a, he had an operation. He had come to Rio soon after a surgery. He had his foot in a cast. So as he reached, Raghav and I actually went to him the next morning itself and said, Sachin, you inevitably, you, will, you, you can't get out in India. You have to be confined to a five-star hotel. Here in Rio, why don't you come out and let's go, go to the beach and we can have breakfast. And he said, absolutely, I'll find it difficult to walk, but yes, let's do this. Let's try and experience this. So as we walk to the, to the shack next to the beach, and a few of us were there, and all of us were clicking photographs and celebrating. So as luck would have it, the person at that shack, he was not, he, he just did not speak a single word of English. So all we wanted was omelette sandwich, and he wanted to put meat in everything. So all of us, Raghav's a vegetarian. So we tried to convince that, look, all we want is an omelette sandwich and we don't want meat. We, we, we weren't able to communicate that. So finally, we find this Brazilian guy who was very intently listening to us. And uh, he figured out English. So I went to him and said, please, can you help us? All we want you to, you know, please tell the, the shop owner that this is what we want. He said, who is this guy? And he looks at Sachin. And I'm like, why? He said, no, all of you all are clicking photos with him. And I said, where are you from? He says, I'm from Brazil. I said, oh, very good. Do you know Pele? He says, come on, yeah. what are you talking? I absolutely know Pele. Pele is the legend, the king, the god. I said, this guy is too Pele. <laughs> he says, what? I says, he's twice Pele. Trust me on this. He says, wow. I said, yes, too Pele. So then he was very sweet. He went and explained. And, and you know, we finished our breakfast. All of a sudden, I turn. So there is this man, his wife, his daughter, his son. There's a full entourage. I'm like, what happened? He said, you said two Pele. I've got to take photographs with this man. So that was our initiation into Rio. Abhinav. Now, Abhinav is, is one of his kind in the world. Abhinav will tell you that you are doing a celebration for that silly little medal that I won in 2008. And you're like, yes. He said, you are in this bubble. Now, I'll give you one Abhinav story. 2008 for Beijing, Abhinav had done everything possible in the world to train, including mapping his brain in South Africa to try and see when he is shooting in a competition, what is the kind of reaction from his brain, how it is absorbing pressure. Okay? So that is part of Abhinav's training going into Beijing. Interestingly, in Beijing, where the event was held, that hall was five times the size of this hall. So it was a big, big shooting range. And when Abhinav first went there, he was overawed that this can be very daunting because as shooters, they are very particular about balance. So Abhinav Bindra, now I'm quoting Abhinav Bindra, he says, I came back to India, went back to Chandigarh, and hired a marriage hall very close to his house, sh set up a shooting range there, and started practicing. And this is not my line, this is his. That's the closest he has come to marriage. Okay, you know, these are, these are superstar athletes. Mahesh Bhupati and I I, I, I mean, where does this start? Where does this end? 
incredible number of stories, including tales of heartbreak, tales of joy, multiple Wimbledon titles, French Open with Sanya, that incredible year of 2012 when we were actually politicking together about what's going on in Indian tennis. We've done enormous work together. My last three panelists, why, why am I doing this panel? Corporate India and sport is something we have been bemoaning for the longest time. We need corporate support. We absolutely need support for our athletes. Obishek Ganguly heads Puma, and Puma means Usain Bolt for many of us, but Puma also means and stands for the support to Mary Com and Dyuti Chand. Now, why Dyuti Chand is something I asked Obishek Ganguly. Dyuti Chand, one story I will tell you, and you will understand how significant this is. Dyuti Chand was born to a family of 13 children, 12 or 13 children, and she tells me that you know, at one point in time she would ask her mom, can I, can I get a pair of shoes? And the mother was like, no, you can't, because you weren't born with a pair, and I can't buy you a pair, I don't have the money to. So she would take cow dung cakes on her head and go and sell the cow dung cakes. So the mother said, take two cow dung cakes, put one underneath each foot, go and sell them, and when you run with one underneath each foot, they will serve as the shoe. 11.22 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, 0 0.007 away from qualifying for the Olympics. That's the support, that's the support that Puma is doing. That's why, that's why for me, this kind of support has the potential to revolutionize Indian Olympic movement. Par Jindal. If you go to that facility in Belari, I had the opportunity to visit that facility on day one. It is an absolutely incredible facility which will revolutionize Indian Olympic sport. In 2012, 2016, 2016, soon after, Sakshi Malik wins the medal, Vikas Krishan comes close. All of them are part Jindal's athletes supported by JSW Sport. But where is the difference? 1992, Limba Ram. Limba Ram goes to the Olympic Games and it competes in an event 70 meter feet at that point in time in archery, loses by one point. And someone goes from the Indian organizers to Limba Ram and says to him, oh, you've lost. And he says, nahi, dubara karne dije, jeet jayenge. And you understand that this is the kind of mindset of the Indian athlete who has come from an underprivileged background. This is what they are changing. They are not only giving the athletes you know, financial support, but also giving them support that they are groomed into holistic individuals who will make a difference to this country going forward. Vivek Singh. Vivek and I work very closely, both Vivek, Anil and I work very, very closely for all the marathons. You know, every day, every day when you open your papers, what do you read? You read about a divided India. You read about communal intolerance. You read about divisions. You read about fissures. You talk about this country being divided every single day. When you come to this city, this city or any other, and you see the Mumbai Marathon with 55,000 people running, and this time, thanks to them, I was standing on that ceiling, next to the, that ceiling, and just asking people randomly, what religion, what caste, what language, what economic background, nobody knew they were running. And that gave me some hope and some optimism about my country. Thank you, Vivek Singh, for doing what you are doing in the realm of sport. That brings my panel. So this is actually a celebration of sport in the truest sense. And as I said, I can name this audience almost individually. I'll call a lot of you up on stage for the photo ops. Three of India's all-time greatest. Perhaps, you know, you've seen the glorious moment, the greatest sporting moment ever in the last 20 years. Put your hands together for Bharat Ratna, Sachin Tendulkar. Okay. 2008, 7.30 in the morning, the last shot, the last shot of 10.8 revolutionized Indian sport for all times to come. Abhinav says it was a silly medal. For me, it has given me a life. Yes, I live in that bubble and happily live in that bubble of sport for all my life. Put your hands together for Abhinav Bindra. As an Indian to win Grand Slams was, was a dream. That dream got accomplished multiple times since then. One shot away, so sport is not only about glory. People fail many, many more times than they win. He's tasted glory, he's tasted defeat. He's an icon, will always be. Put your hands together for Mahesh Bhupati.
I'll start with you, Sachin. Sachin, you were in Rio, uh, 2016. You had the cast. Oh, yeah, I thought I was supposed to say all that. Okay. Uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> you, 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 you have the field, but your your first experience of of Rio, because you you spoke to Indian athletes there. Uh, your first Olympics in that sense at IOC invite. Can you talk about your first experience of Rio? I was in London when I got a mail from Thomas Bach that he would like me to attend uh, the Rio Olympics. Even though I was operated on my knee, which was a major surgery, I decided to go because I didn't want to wait for four more years. You know, after uh, uh, I stopped playing cricket, I thought this was something that connected me to with other athletes. Uh, oh, when I landed there, it was it was a big challenge because I had this big, big brace on my leg, and uh, it was really tough to you know roam around here and there. The biggest experience of Rio was uh, you know being able to enter, having access to that village, which I believe even media guys are not allowed. Nobody is allowed. So I mean, it's, is that a, is that a dig? No, 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 not really. I mean, it is it is something where, you know, sport uh, being played at the highest level, you require focus, uh, you require to be in that zone. I was just discussing with Abhinav and he said, you know, I don't remember my career. So, entire career he's been in that zone. And uh, that, is the, that is the beauty of sport and the commitment of our athletes. I had, I had the privilege of... Uh, spending an afternoon with our athletes. I just wanted to go there and wish them. I was not there to give them a lecture, nothing. I was there to give my best wishes on behalf of all of us here. I said, uh, the nation is uh, looking forward to your performances. Go out and do what you are good at. Uh, I myself, I remember in Malaysia a long time ago, I think in year 1998, 1998 when the Commonwealth Games were played there, I was part of it. And we spent about uh, 10 days or so in the village there. So that, I loved that atmosphere, you know, rubbing shoulders with athletes. Uh, there were a number of leading athletes in the world who were participating there. And uh, to be able to just uh, adopt a different lifestyle because, uh, you know, when you play Cricket World Cup, you, you don't have a village. You stay in different hotels, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a different experience altogether. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed, though uh, I'm not complaining here. For those 10 days, we did not have hot water in the room. Uh, we somehow managed to keep ourselves clean, but uh, all in all, the experience was fantastic. But the icing on the cake was when I, when I in Rio, uh, I watched Indian hockey team. And they played brilliantly because I had kind of planned my trip in a way where you know I could watch Indian athletes and support them. Hockey was uh, uh, one of those uh, sports which I witnessed, and, and our team really did well. And uh, with Thomas Bach, I ended up watching a rugby match because the rugby also I think they have six or seven players, you know, lesser players than a normal uh, rugby team. But uh, the energy was incredible over there and uh, then finally you know one of those mornings having that uh, egg sandwich was also not not a bad experience and 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 coconut water so so to add to that if i can ask sachin sachin you've had such historical milestones in your career and you continue to have them out long after you've retired um, including with the laureus sports moment now um, now in one of the critiques of cricket has been that it's it's relatively lesser countries. Now, in this, in the Laureus uh, competition, you your iconic picture from the World Cup, uh, it beat a whole bunch of things from across the world, including Usain Bolt and others. How did that feel for you compared to your moments on the cricketing field? First of all, let me make it clear, it's not me, it's us. You know, uh, that was the best moment of my life on the field. And that is what... That was the reason I started playing cricket. In 1983, when India won the World Cup, I was watching and I did not understand. But I started my journey then. Somewhere, something had ticked. 
and i said okay this is what i want to do one day so it took me 21 years i never lost hope and along with me you also never lost hope which is a good thing because sport is all about you know having that hope believing in yourself and then immersing yourself in your preparations invariably i feel that once you are immersed in that process results follow and that is what i did i mean i i just wanted to stay passionate just wanted to continue being madly in love with what i like doing and i love playing cricket i didn't want to do anything else in life so that gets appreciated you know what what better than that i mean i think uh, everyone has played a role and uh, it is uh, you mentioned about you know the books also inspire you know and then uh, these kind of uh, stories hopefully you know when when youngsters watch maybe 10 years down the line 15 years down the line how india won the world cup in 2011 i'm sure you know it will continue to inspire them and it's then one such moment because i've always believed uh, sport has the power to unify the world it brings everyone closer it brings everyone tighter and uh, that is loved training i was a very lousy competitor to be very honest and i was always assailed by a lot of anxiety and nervousness and you know i was a chicken hearted person while i was actually competing so you know i'd done everything possible from mapping my brain to going to a commander course in in preparation for beijing um i was training in germany and i was uh, going to you know leave out all of you that it teaches you how to win it teaches you how to lose and then you know you have to uh, keep a balance and i think that is the most important thing mohesh if i can bring you into the conversation um you've gone where no indian has gone before the number of medals the number of titles you won the grand slams you won um and in a sport where india has traditionally not been very strong um abhinav after he uh, after he stopped shooting he was part of a renaissance of indian shooting where they completely changed the system of indian shooting by creating a juniors program which is now uh, uh, which is now reaping great rewards for india what is it when you were growing up wanting to be a tennis player that you missed um, and which you wish you would have had in retrospect and what is it that you would like to change in indian tennis now to create that next generation because that's not necessarily coming in the way many people would like you know i think uh, growing up um, so i think you know vis-a-vis -vis infrastructure we've always had you know when i when i speak about tennis you know what you need you need tennis courts you need a track you need a gym right i think the biggest thing that we didn't have were the experts growing up to teach us at a very young age you know how to train how to recover how to eat and you know if i ha if i wanted to have something when i was growing up i told both parth and mustafa this i wish i had that institute to kind of train and use as my base i would have been a much much better athlete which would have been a much better tennis player so you know we did not have that i think we had the sai centers which i think were poorly managed and uh, you know not uh, fully used uh, for the athletes so i think like everyone said here on the panel things are getting better things have to get a lot better they're not you know moving at the pace that they should i think the last olympics technically was a disappointing olympics for everyone i think when everyone came home there was a lot of speculation on what should be done but you know i don't think enough was done uh, you know today we're all hoping for 10 medals 15 medals if if it's an if it's an amazing olympics but uh, honestly if we come back with six i think we need to all you know throw a big party mahesh you were one shot away from an olympic medal take us through that thanks. tell us what thanks for bringing that up <laughs> <laughs> so you were literally one shot away one point away yeah uh, you know like abhinav says you know disappointment uh, i think it goes with the territory um, you know honestly um, as tennis players you know it's it's a very different uh, vibe for us when we go to the olympics because uh, when when we grow up the biggest events have always been um you know wimbledon the us open and the french open Oly olympics uh, tennis was only introduced in the olympics in 88 uh, and then when i went to atlanta for the first time in 1996 i don't know i i had no idea what the olympics meant i was just happy to be there i think we got a wild card because leander needed a partner and mahesh was hanging around so but then obviously when you get 
you know, you play for the flag and you get the juices flowing and, you know, then you see the kind of atmosphere with the other athletes and going to the opening ceremony, you get the goosebumps. Uh, yeah, I mean, the biggest regret, I think, of uh, my career is not being able to win that match. And you, you put that uh, same situation uh, back on the table ten times with the four semi-finalists. I'm pretty sure nine out of ten we, we end up with the medal. But, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles in sport. Sachin, what you just said, I mean, if, if I can ask you, you know, you've, at the age of 16, you take on Pakistan, one of the toughest things in sport. At the age of 19, you, you win a, a man of the match title in a World Cup match against Pakistan. So when these youngsters, they sort of go, a Manu Bakhar, a Saurabh Chaudhary or whoever, I mean, and a lot of our athletes are between the age groups of 16 and 20. They are young people, formative minds, all of a sudden will be exposed to Olympic stage and pressure. As an athlete, if I can ask you, how do you deal with pressure? You've been there, done that? Uh, I think it's important to understand the direction of pressure. If it's on top of your head, it will only take you down. If it's with you, you move forward. And that is exactly what we discussed during 2011 World Cup. That 1.3 billion is with us. It's not sitting on top of our heads. So that suddenly changed our thought process. And it's good to have that pressure. And why do expectations increase? You know, expectations only raise because of your past good performances, which is a good thing to happen. I mean, I would much rather have that pressure when I'm walking out to bat, when people are expecting something of me. And I would, be, I would be at a wrong spot if people are not expecting anything from me. So my message to them is, Continue to be what you can be, the best that you can be. And it's all about that moment. I mean, you've got both leading athletes who have experienced that at the highest level, you know, where literally a fraction can change. It's the difference between getting a medal and not getting a medal. But let's not think about that fraction. You think about what you want to do rather than thinking of the possible problems, possible obstacles, you find solutions. Because challenges are always going to be there. They are going to be your constant companion. And if you constantly find solutions, you keep moving forward. Just to ask a follow-up before Nalin takes over again. You know, this is not an Olympic question, but if, for example, when Abhinav won the gold or you won the World Cup, uh, people haven't been there. I mean, he's still alone when Mahesh won the Grand Slam. Our women's team have made the finals of the World Cup, which is this Sunday. Yes, it was a rained out game, but that doesn't matter. We've won all our games in the pool stages. We've made the final as the best team. It has a 16-year-old Shefali Verma who met you in Australia. Uh, you know, when they go to that final, India has not won it ever. Your thoughts, your message, how do you deal with whole country will again be watching? They fell close at Lords. Shut that out of your mind, honestly. You know, just be in that moment, go out and play. Because coincidentally, I was there next to the trophy and our few team members were there from our women's team. And I said, it would be nice to see you with this trophy in India. So go out and give your best. And that is what my message to them is. You know, don't take any pressure, though it's easier said than done. You know, I remember when we were playing Pakistan in 2003 World Cup match, the schedule was announced a year in advance. And people kept telling me that this match is going to be the rest of the other match. I said, it's not going to happen. And then they would say, ki, okay, but no pressure. Nahi lena. So thank you very much. <laughs> so all these things happen. But I genuinely want to tell them that, you know, uh, just stay together. You don't need to spend time with the outside world. If you are in company with each other, you can keep talking positive things. Uh, because good things have happened to our team. I've been following their performances and uh, they have inspired so many youngsters. And not only to pick up a cricket bat or a cricket ball. It's about being a good athlete. It, it's about bring, bringing Lawrence to our na nation. And if you can come back, you know, so many athletes in different fields have brought laurels to our nation. This would be another one. And that's what I would say, that go out and enjoy yourself. Uh, I wanted to ask Abhinav. Uh, Abhinav, um you were part of the Olympic task force with the Prime Minister set up. 
you were also part of of the uh, after the rio olympics one of the big disappointments in rio was shooting but since then there's been a renaissance in indian shooting you were part of a committee that was set up we've talked about systems in indian sport and what's wrong one of the things that, that indian sport has done fantastically well at in the last 4 years is by changing everything in shooting and that came from the report that you wrote as the head of a committee this committee the it was your committee you headed it you identified all the problems in indian shooting and they fixed many of those talk us through that because right now we have a whole bunch of teenagers who are winning medals for india in shooting and that came out as a result of what you guys are identified no i don't agree with that i think um, you know the the report uh, obviously you know showed a few flaws that were happened but i think the success that we are ha we are having is is due to the process that has been set into play for a vast period of time i mean we fixed a few things but you know the process started long time ago i mean the 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 federation started investing in a junior program for a long time and you know what what the systems that were set in place maybe 10 years back which have been polished now uh, are now showing results i think one thing in sport which we need to recognize is that we need to be very patient and we need to be persistent uh, and um, i think the federation did a really good job in 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 actually accepting that they went wrong in in, in certain areas and then they've tried to fix it and um, but of course it's been a process which was set into play for for a fair period of time it has been polished over the last few years but the success what we are seeing now is the result of all what has happened in the last 10 years i would say i think abhinav as usual is being modest as he always is one of the things they did in that report was that they identified the flaws one of the flaws was they found in rio for example a particular coach was being paid money when the coach didn't exist uh, they put published all this and they put it in the public domain and they fixed these things that that's very rare to happen in in a federation in indian sport so you know we must give credit when we as journalists we give brick bat we must give credit where it's due borya absolutely mahesh where, what is it about olympic stage i mean you know whoever you speak to and people say oh you know it's the olympic stage the pressure of the olympic games uh, i mean can you make me understand that like what goes through yes it comes every 4 years but his famous line it comes every day is that the way you train like in your case and and to deal with i don't want to create controversy here but 2012 winning the french open then you don't get to play the london games with uh, sanya in 2012 you are you are forced into a corner even before you go and play the olympics talk to me about the mindset and the olympic stage and the and the and the tough challenges that one how do you deal with the olympic stage no i think it's uh, from an athlete's perspective it's a lot of excitement you know i don't really listen to anything abhinav says because you know we all know he's special and he's got his own process so you know when it's two years before the olympics you're already getting excited because you know you as a tennis player you want to peak at a certain time because there's a cut off for example in june to be able to qualify for the olympics you know in other sports you have your pre qualifying events um yeah and i think the biggest excitement besides you know being having that opportunity to win a medal for your country is the fact that it's comes in once in 4 years right i mean like i said um, you know there are world cups and there are world championships and there are grand slam events but you know coming home with a medal from the olympics uh, coming home with any kind of success at the olympics is uh, you know something that you'll be able to tell you know people write books about <laughs> correct 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 in sachin's case okay this is one anecdote i've got 10 more minutes i'll i'll talk to them for 10 more minutes before i i i close out and and do my photo op so th i'm i'm doing this interview with roger federer and 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 in the middle of it he had given me the autobiography that uh, we had written together so he had given a copy signed to give it to roger so i give that copy to roger federer and he looks at it and he says oh you know what in the middle of the interview he says only time when i was playing wimbledon and i am Roger Federer knows who Roger Federer is. So he says the only time when I was playing Wimbledon and all of a sudden I was posing for a photograph with this man Sachin Tendulkar and people weren't screaming Roger Roger they were screaming Sachin Sachin. And I'm like what? He says yeah tell your friend. And I'm like wow. Now these two have a have a have a good bonding. Sachin in in Tokyo again you've been invited by the IOC looking forward to to watching Roger. Maybe the last time i'm looking forward to watching roger but our guy should take the medal i think uh, it's important that you know india comes first and then the rest of the world you now yes roger is a good friend and he would also understand what i'm trying to tell we need those medals and uh, see roger is a terrific athlete and you know i'm not talking rocket science here 
but he is a wonderful human being i think that is something that i really really value uh, whenever he is there playing tennis it's a poetry in motion i enjoy that's one sport that i follow very closely and i'd like to believe that i understand a little bit uh, so you know i hope that he is there but india takes the medal india takes the medal the first week hopefully sachin's there and multiple medals i mean uh, realistically when you look so we keep pegging these numbers and giving these numbers do you i mean i know you will say i'm out of that bubble but do you follow your sport still very closely and and that because a lot of these youngsters keep mentioning tweeting mentioning that you have inspired them your your high performance center that you did by the way the one high performance center that abhinav created for the first time in chandigarh for elite high performance indian athletes that's free that is a real give back to indian sport ladies and gentlemen so they keep talking about all of that your inspir- do you follow them i mean and and how close are we they've won every possible tournament every possible world cup every possible competition raninder says we are going to win so many etc how hopeful are you well we go into the games as favorites i think uh, we can't shy away from that uh, so uh, is this the first time that india goes as favorites in shooting in multiple events in multiple events i mean we have 15 quota places at the moment uh, which would result in 21 starts because some of them shoot multiple events so 21 shots at a medal so even if we have 50% strike rate that's a lot of medals um you asking me for my prediction uh, well borya and i have been debating this a lot before we, and I, i think we've agreed at least on a number of to be conservative about 7 to 8 anything less than 7 to 8 medals i think on current form because of course anything can happen on, on that moment i these gentlemen will know that 100 times more than i would know that but i think 7 to 8 on current form is a reasonable expectation why is your favorite olympic story i mean is is the village the st- like uh, your favorite olympic story yeah i mean that uh, the olympic village is you know <laughs> where it all happens i mean uh, you get to see i mean the biggest superstars over there you know you look out of your window at 4 a.m. and you'll see guys uh, in full track suits in really hot temperature running uh, running you know non stop around the block for hours trying to lose weight be- before they weigh in uh, you know i got to meet in atlanta i got to shake hands with mohammad ali at the Olympic village while he was in the in the in a wheelchair I saw Kobe Bryant I mean Usain Bolt I mean it's just uh, it's a surreal experience and as Sachin says I mean that's uh, you know always uh, cherished Sachin in Rio th- that experience of ours was quite interesting you went for the hockey game and just as we and and you you were walking with that cast and that was quite a challenge and then uh, uh, they literally stopped us and said go to the, you re, you remember that it was a challenge and you know since we are talking about that story let me not talk about myself but at the laureus awards you know i came across this uh, paranordic uh, skiing athlete and uh, she obviously i mean did not have both limbs and while skiing she had fractured her elbow and she won a medal and i made i made a special effort to meet her after the prize reception was done because i've never come across any athlete who who's who's been faced with so many challenges so i went and i congratulated her and she was not um, i don't think she she followed cricket but just as a fellow colleague i would say that you know it's it's it, it made me feel special that i am also an athlete because those kind of experiences we talk about you know minor injuries here and there and here where you don't have both your limbs and your one arm is fractured and then you go and win a medal i think that's that's just incredible so my walk forget about that walk that's hardly anything parth jindal abhishek ganguly and vivek singh all mentioned about inspiration and sachin just mentioned para athletes how many of my audience has heard of murli kant petkar this is one of the best audiences one can possibly have how many of you have have heard of murli kant petkar see this is this is what the two of them the three of them just mentioned who is murli kant petkar 
Murlikant Petkar, 1965 war veteran, five bullets, 1968 first ever Indian Paralympian to win a bronze, 1972 world, uh, 1972 gold medalist in the 50 meter free freestyle with a world record of 33 seconds. This country still doesn't know of Murlikant Petkar. We need a sports culture, ladies and gentlemen. We absolutely need a sports culture. This is what this panel is talking about. My last, span, my last panelists are talking about. When Devendra Jhajariya tells me that Nalin has told you about the Kulhari story that he cut 500 times and he did not have a TheraBand. Devendra Jhajariya said in school, he was eight years old when his hand got electrocuted and he lost his hand, right? So he says, uh, like in India, people said, Are, tera to ek hai. and his mother would tell him, doesn't matter doesn't matter you are absolutely fine you should train exactly like other kids go play so he had gone to school and he had uh, given his name for this competition in the javelin so these other kids told him how can you throw the javelin you can't you don't have a hand move away so he goes home crying and his mother says if you believe in yourself he was born into a farming family there were trees around so he cut a tree log made it into a javelin and started practicing at home and he tells me quote he says, Goryada, when, when that school sport happened, and I went there, I gave my name, and the rest of the people were enjoying me, they were enjoying me, and then I went to you. I said, you guys first do it, and then I will do it. And he says, when the highest was 35 meters, and he threw 42 meters as a school child, he says, I had won an Olympic gold. That for me, these moments, Abhinav, Bindra, Sachin, Tendulkar, Mahesh, Bhupati, I think revolutionizes Indian sport forever. Sachin, your favorite memory has already been celebrated at Laureus. But I need to ask you this, 2011 World Cup, one thing that I will never forget, you actually called Sudhir Kumar Gautam into the dressing room and passed him the trophy. All of us are fans here, why? I think वो हमारे लिए सब कुछ करता है। I think with people like these, I mean, they have no expectations, zero expectations. I have offered him plenty of things. He doesn't want to take anything from me, except a match ticket. So I mean, you have these kind of fans, and I called him. I said कि है ना तुम सारे fans को represent कर रहे हो यहाँ पे। तुम्हारे हाथ में ये trophy पकड़ो तुम और उठाओ trophy जैसे हम सब उठा रहे हैं वैसे तुम्हें भी उठाना चाहिए ट्रॉफी एंड दैट वाज आई मीन इट केम फ्रॉम माय हार्ट एंड एंड वी कॉल्ड हिम टू द ड्रेसिंग रूम ऑल द प्लेयर्स वर देयर एंड वी अलाउड हिम टू लिफ्ट द ट्रॉफी फंटास्टिक माय इश योर फेवरेट स्पोर्टिंग मोमेंट विंबलडन और एनीथिंग लाइक दैट और � no, I think uh, you know, for us, winning that Wimbledon title in '99 will always stand out because uh, growing up in India, Wimbledon is a lot more special than the other Grand Slams, and uh, it was never really our favorite surface either. So, being able to win Wimbledon once, at least in doubles, is uh, probably the highlight. And thereafter, started that journey. I mean, it has to be that one moment. I mean, Nalin and I today we were talking about it, and I said what you said that it's a silly medal. Why is he celebrating it again? For God's sake, in hundred years, one guy has won it. My favorite sporting moment came one training day. Uh, it came when nobody was watching. Um, I hated physical exercise and I was to do 100 sit-ups. It was the 31st of December and my trainer miscounted at 95. He said, I'm done for the year, well done. I said, no, I have five more to go. That was my favorite sporting day. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous and very Abhinav. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, as I said, it. It's been an absolutely glorious what? I promised Sachin 7.45, I promised Abhinav 7.45. We've, we've overshot, but, but that's fine. I mean, it, it, it means uh, a lot to all of us here. As I said, this book will be converted. This book will be converted on celluloid, and it gives me great pleasure. Thank you once again, Sarita and Sanjay. Please, can both of you come up on stage? And I now, I told Raghav this. This book is dedicated to somebody very special to me. Rochana, can you come up on stage, please? My sister, she survived breast cancer. For me, a real-life hero. This book is dedicated to her. Rahul, please, can I have you on stage, please? Come, 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 come. This is a celebration. Please come up on stage. Rajneesh, can I have you on stage? Come up on stage for the final photo op. Akriti, can I please have you on stage? Join us on stage. I'm indebted to HarperCollins for believing in this, this project. Raghav, can I please have you on stage once more? This is a very, very special moment for each of us, like the last photo op. 
It's taken eight, nine years for Nalin and me to put this together. There can be flaws. My friends in the media, several of you I know. I think I can see Shion there. Clayton was supposed to come. Ashwin's there. A lot of you who are dear friends of mine who do Olympic sport as I have done over several years. We learn together. We celebrate our athletes together. This is a journey that all of us are part of. It is a journey that each of us are proud of and each of us will forever be proud of. It is for India, as all of them says. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again to all of them. Sachin Tendulkar, Abhinav Bindra, Mahesh Bhupati, and everybody on stage. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Dreams of a billion, maybe another edition after Tokyo. Somebody will again tell me, Tumne aur ek kitab lik diya. Who knows? Thank you very, very much. Thanks a lot. One second. Abhishek, Parth, can you please join in again? Come, come, come. Uh, Vivek, can you join in? Anil, can you join in? Let's the final photo up, please. Come. There you go. Super. I hope all of you have enjoyed this program because it was all about a celebration of Indian sport. And once again, I'm indebted to all of you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you so very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Oh, Mustafa, why did I not call you on stage? Please, 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 please. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I missed you. Come, 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 come. Come on stage. Again, again, somebody very, very dear to me. My, my apologies. Please come on stage. Sports person, someone we are working extremely closely. We've got to take one photograph together. Come, come, come. Come here, come here. Come this side. Whichever side. Okay, for there's food, right? For everybody, there's where is it? So there's there's dinner outside for everybody in the audience. So please do join us for dinner, because thanks to Raghav once again, I did not thank you because I don't need to. So hit the subscribe option and the bell icon to get all the exclusive sports videos on Extra Time.